In this episode, I will demonstrate how to manipulate a raster image by applying a perspective effect with the help of Image Magic and then using that in my vector project. I'll be using Inkscape version 0.46. You will need to download and install Image Magic for your operating system if you don't already have it in order to use the terminal command that I will demonstrate shortly. If you're using a Debian based distro such as Ubuntu, then it's as simple as a sudo apt-get install image magic in a terminal. Binaries are also available for Windows and Mac users. You may visit www.imagemagic.org for a closer look at this small but powerful package. So let's begin the tutorial. Okay, what I've done ahead of time is taken three screenshots of my desktop for use in a montage that I will put together in Inkscape. I'll show you what they look like now. The first screenshot that I put together, and I'm just dragging and dropping these uh, off to the side from my desktop. Um, here's my first screenshot, okay? So basically what I've done was change a wallpaper and open up a couple applications, okay? So that's my first screenshot. My second screenshot looks like this. <clears throat> here I just changed the wallpaper again opened up a couple applications okay we'll get rid of that one and here's my third screenshot okay this is just kind of a run-of-the-mill hardy heron background with my garbage on the side okay what I want to do is use image magic to take these raster images and convert it to a perspective image okay now it's important to note that what I'm doing here is almost a, an exact duplicate of Richard's episode number 35. Okay, so if you to go back and and watch that, you'll see that uh, my up or my uh, screencast here is almost identical. But what Richard explains uh, is that you can use GIMP or Photoshop. Um, to make a perspective effect and you can and it works very well you can also use digicam which I like too um, but what's difficult I, which you know it, and this could just be my uh, lack of experience with GIMP but I find that when I make a perspective effect uh, in GIMP it's I can't do it precisely or I don't know how to produce how to do it precisely by using image magic I know that every time I apply it to a particular raster image I'm gonna get the same effect every single time it's not gonna be just a little different than the next one so I'm gonna show you how to do that okay now what's really cool about this in in doing this in Inkscape and uh, image magic is that uh, Inkscape is a vector editor okay it's it's I wouldn't say it's used that often for raster images, but you know I, I can't speak for everybody out there. I use it often for raster images because it's it's just it's it's got a lot of potential and a lot of flexibility. And what's nice about this is typically you know I would think to myself that I needed to convert this to vector and use the perspective effect to do what I want, but I don't have to. And that's where Image Magic comes in. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is take these flat images and convert it to a perspective. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this. And we're going to open up uh, the Image Magic website. And I've navigated to the uh, Usage Distorts Perspective page. And about halfway down the page, they show you a command line script that you can use that will pretty much take a flat image like we see here and convert it to this perspective shape. Well that's exactly what we want and that's what exactly what Richard has described in his episode 35 by using the GIMP. Okay so what I've done here ahead of time is I've taken this and I've cleaned it up a little bit in uh, my text editor and I've put my file names here this is the input file and this is my output file okay and basically all that I've done is changed four unit characters here okay I've changed this 0 I've changed the 2 this 90 and this 91 and just by altering these four uh, units I can get just about anything I want in in my perspective effect okay 
uh, I'm using this particular perspective because I want all of them to look alike but you know for your montage you can do just about anything you want okay let me take a sip here okay so now what I'm gonna do is take this and copy it and again I, I'm not gonna explain to you what these things mean um, you can go to the website and you can have a read of this whole thing to get a full understanding because the, the website explains a lot better than I can do it for you so please have a read of that okay anyways back to this I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna open up a terminal and all of my images are just setting off to the right here on my desktop so you'll need to uh, CD to your desktop and I'm gonna paste this in and I'm gonna hit enter okay and depending how fast your computer is depends on how fast it converts the image on my computer here uh, it converts the image in uh, I don't know anywhere from five to ten seconds so it's already on my desktop now and the terminal is just a little slow in uh, coming back so let's take a look at what we've just created okay here is our original wallpaper and here is our brand new wallpaper converted to a perspective with image magic okay now basically what I have here is I have a document that's 1440 wide by 900 high that's the size of my monitor resolution okay what image magic does is it keeps the envelope size of your original and it basically skews it inward okay and when it skews it inward what it does with the space that's left is turns it transparent and it's not white it is transparent so when you put it on top of something you'll see that it blends in quite nicely okay all right so that's how you do it with image magic um, so what I've done ahead of time is I've already converted my other two pictures so I'm gonna go ahead and bring those in and carry on with the rest of this uh, screencast here Let me zoom out and at this point I'm gonna pretty much duplicate what Richard has done with the raster image in episode 35 by creating a reflection okay so I'm gonna go ahead on this first one I'm gonna right click and duplicate and I'm gonna mirror that okay we're gonna zoom in on this just a little bit and we're gonna skew the image I'm holding my control key down and we'll put that about right there and we'll fix that just a little bit okay Let me zoom in here and get that just a little closer Okay. Now for this one, skew this just a little bit down here. Okay, that probably is pretty good. Okay, and I'm going to do that for each one of these. Okay, so I'm going to hit this one next. We'll duplicate it and we'll flip that. We'll drive her down. push this up and I'm just gonna eye this yeah it looks pretty good and we'll slide that up a little bit looks like I need to go just a smidgen more okay I think that looks pretty good and we're gonna do that again on 
in this image, right click, duplicate, and flip. And we'll bring that up here. And we'll chew that up just a little bit. Okay. So let's back out. Those are our three images there. And Richard pretty much tells us that what we need to do next is draw a square. Yeah, you want to make sure your square is not already transparent. So I'll draw something off to the side here. Remove the stroke. And we need to add a fill. Okay. So let's try this again. And it has to cover your entire image. So, whoops, got a guide turned on there. We'll find out how big our image is here, and we'll put that right over it. Okay, has to go up just a little bit more. Okay, so the black is pretty much covering uh, our uh, reflection image here, and that's what we want. And we need to give this thing a gradient. So I'll start from the top, holding the control key down, and we'll move it down about right here, I guess. And I'm going to highlight this last stop and do black there. We'll highlight the top stop, and we'll do white there. Okay, now I'm going to edit this to make this pure white and pure black. I could have done that easier if I were off the Tango palette here. But okay, white and full black. Okay. Now what I'm going to do before I do this. I'm going to push this behind everything. Whoops. Push this behind everything. And I'm going to draw just a guide in here. So I know where I am. Well, let me back out here. Sorry about that. Let's try this again. Okay. There we go. This will kind of help me uh, keep an eye on uh, where I need to shift my gradient. Okay, so I'm going to take this uh, black shape here, put it back to the front. Okay, now I can take uh, this image here. Send this this to the front, and we'll, un, we'll modify our gradient. Okay, now when I do my gradient, see I can kind of follow this line. Okay, and let's take a look at that now. Move this line out of the way. We'll select both images here. We'll do a mask, and that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to get it just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and unset the mask. We'll adjust our gradient. And I'm going to pull this up just a little higher. About right there. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. And before I do this, what I'm going to do... I'm going to get rid of this marker that I've made. Move this stuff over so I've got room to work here. OK, 
okay and I'm gonna take this shape we're gonna duplicate this and I'll duplicate this one again okay tell you what I'm gonna move this whoops take this and delete it take that and delete it take this and move it down I take this and group it and we'll take this one and group it I'll show you where I'm going with this here and we'll take this and group it okay we'll select all three images we'll go to our line tool and we'll center these up here okay that'll help us later select all three of these and we'll ungroup them take a second okay now when I put this thing back on here see where we are I need to go over just a little bit more okay I think that looks pretty good now what I'm going to do is duplicate this two times slide this one over and we'll slide this one over okay now we're gonna select these two images here two objects and we're gonna do a mask set okay that's gonna give us our reflection I'm gonna go ahead and do it for this over here we'll do a set and we'll do it a third time for this over here we'll do a set okay now we'll take these and group them together and we're getting close to being done here so not too much longer okay now again I followed uh, Richard's steps or Richard's uh, steps in episode 35 okay now what I'm gonna do is take this and we're gonna move this down about right in here we're gonna take this one move it down about right there okay and I'm gonna draw a background I'm gonna make this full black and we'll send it behind everything Okay, and we're going to give this some padding at the bottom. Make that white. Okay, and we're going to blur this and change its transparency a little bit. Give this about a, yeah, let's do about a 12% blur. And for transparency, Let's slide this down to about a 30. Let's go even more. Okay, we'll lower that to the very bottom. We'll bring it up a step. Well, maybe not. It look like it's going to come up here. Okay, lower that to the bottom. We'll lower this to the bottom. There we go. See if I can grab it here. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with this here. Just kind of want to create a little bit of a lighter surface. Okay, and basically what I have here, if you've ever seen on the internet where uh, web designers have put together some screenshots or, uh, you know, um, software boxes just about anything where they're where they're lining stuff up to create a little montage with a little reflection underneath that's pretty much what I've got so this could be used uh, let's say for example you're a wallpaper designer 
and you've got several wallpapers you want to put on your site, uh, you can create some type of a banner montage like this. So that's pretty much the screencast. So hopefully what I've taught you is uh, you can use uh, tools like Image Magic, which are which is very powerful. Um, I don't use it enough uh, as I should. Um, I still rely on GIMP to do most of my uh, raster em or, uh, editing. But uh, again, using Image Magic, I'm going to get the same perspective every single time. Um, it's just a little command script, and and it works very nicely uh, along with uh, Inkscape. And what's great about Inkscape is that it's very flexible. You can work with those raster images, and uh, you can put that together with uh, some vector, and you you'll get a nice uh, end result. So, I hope you learned something from the screencast. Thank you for watching. I'm Heathen X.